Now, the church, let us look at our chapter. Now, what is the church? We always use the word, go to church, come to church, I'm going to church. Now, what is the meaning of church? Now, the Greek word for church is ekklesia, ek, all right? Ekklesia, ek, like you see that sign there, exit, ek, exit, is from that concept, ek, exit. Now, what is ekklesia? Exit and then call, all right? So the Greek word church, chosen for where the people of God gather, is the called out ones. Exit, call. Two words put together, people who are called out of the world to exit this world, not to die, all right? Exit this world means not to be part of the world in its systems, in its loves, in its um, um, values. That's why the Christian, when we say we are going to church, it is not just a building. The Christian must remember that. It is not just this physical brick and mortar. The church means it is a group of people that understands, and not just understand, but truly are separated from the world. All right? That is the meaning of church. Of course, some people use the word church to refer to a physical building. But for the believer with that right concept, then we have to ask ourselves, am, when I say I am part of a church, are you really part of a people that is called out yourself and the church itself? All right, so that word is important to understand. Now look at your BBK books. Point number two, the people of the Lord called apart for his service. Well, to worship him, to love him, to serve him, to bring the gospel to the world, to do his kingdom's work. So that is what church should mean to us. Now, but the church is also, well, often refers to, is referring to a gathering of people in a local church. Now, the Christian must understand this concept. So, there are many Christian writers today, they reject this concept about church. Now, first and foremost, if we say church, in the Bible, you say the, the apostles wrote to the church. Now, it also means a physical um, um, group of people or place where they gather, all right? So we have physical buildings, all right? Maybe I... I, I all right, we have... Hmm. Right, we have physical buildings. Physical buildings. Now, this is called the local church, all right? The local church. Now, it is like Paul wrote to um, the church in Ephesus and so on. Local churches. BPCW is a local church. But you also must know that when the Bible refers to church, you have to think of what the Bible is saying. Now, if you would um, turn to the book of Ephesians, all right? Ephesians chapter 5. And there's an important reason why we must recognize this, all right? Ephesians chapter 5. Now, let us read verses 25, uh, verses 25 to 27 together. Reading. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. <clears throat> now, remember here the word church means called out once, and God says, Holy, without blemish. The word holy means separate. Always remember that. Separate as well. Now, <clears throat> Christ tells us in his word that he gave himself for the church. He died for the church. And he will present to himself a spotless bride. Now, when, says, when Christ says, I died for the church, does it mean that Christ died for BPCWA? Died for the church in Ephesus, the local church. 
That, and Christ said, I will present to me a glorious church. Means that one day this church is received into heaven, all right? Not the physical building, but these people received into heaven. So Christ said, I will present to me, myself, a people, a church, a gathering of people, a group of people to myself in heaven. Now, there are people who reject this concept called the invisible church. Maybe it's the first time you're hearing, what? Invisible church? What is it? Now, when Christ said, I die for the church and I'll present a church to myself, then it means everyone in that church is saved, right? Everyone is saved means this church will be in heaven, this gathering of people in heaven. Now, is it possible that everyone in BPCW is saved? Everyone in the churches around the world, as long as you're in a church, you are saved? It doesn't mean that. So, when the Bible says church, we have to also understand what the Bible is saying. That is the local church, where there are... Try to use different color now. Right? Where there are unbelievers. I put it red, huh? as well as, put it blue, believers, all right? There are both unbelievers and believers. So the local church is made up of believers and unbelievers. And when Christ said, I died for the church and I present this body to myself, he's talking about the universal, invisible church, all right? So remember that. This church of these people, they are all saved, all saved. And it's universal, not just in Perth, not just in Sydney, but around the whole world will be presented to him. Now, then it means there is this so-called, now, the invisible church, some call it that, some call it the universal church, all right, of all believers. Now, some call it the Catholic church. So now you must learn this term when you read some Christian materials. The word Catholic was always applied to the New Testament church. All right? The New Testament universal church. Okay? Means the group of believers, the Catholic church. It's universal. The word Catholic simply means um, entire or, or universal. Now, there is a difference between Catholic church and Roman Catholic church. You see the term is a misnomer. How can it be universal but yet Roman, all right? The Roman Catholic Church is a different thing. They try to say the trope in Rome is the Catholic Church. It is not, all right? So when you see certain writings, all writings you see Catholic, it doesn't mean that they're talking about the Roman Catholic Church, right? So, and sometimes today they say the Catholic Church, they are referring to the Roman Catholic Church. So be aware. But what is this invisible universal church? Now, God says that I put it this way. That the believers, the believers in different churches, now, they make up the universal church. So today, today is the universal church worshipping God in Australia today. Yes. What it means is the gathering of true believers worshipping God now, there are no unbelievers in this universal, so-called invisible church that Christ died for and will bring and present to him spotless, okay? Now, it means this. Where do you find the universal church? The universal church or the invisible church of believers is found inside the local church. So inside the local church, there are, there are, there are people that make up the universal church. All right? And this universal church of people, now in God's eyes, they are the true believers worshipping Him. Okay? Now there are Christian writers who reject this concept of universal. They say, ah, these theologians come up with all these kind of funny things. Just ignore it. A church is a church. Now it is wrong to think that because once you think that, there are a few dangers that occur. Number one, it means that Ephesians, what God says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 and 26, means God, as long as you are in a church, you are going to be redeemed and you are going to be in heaven. That is why people have this concept. As long as I go to a church, 
I can go to heaven. If I'm a member of a church, so some people become a member of church. Without this understanding, yes, you can be a member of a church, but you are not part of the universal church. You are not saved. So, young and old alike, don't think that just because you are a member of BPCWA, or don't try to, I want to be a member of BPCWA, so I be baptized so that I can become a member of a church, then therefore I'm going to heaven. That is how people think. Because they don't understand or really reject this concept of universal church, where as long as I'm part of the church in divisions, well, I will be presented to Christ. And the Roman Catholic Church, well, they capitalize on that. We are the Roman Catholic Church. As long as you're not part of the Roman Catholic Church, you're outside it, you have no salvation. Then people think, well, there's no such thing as this invisible universal church of believers only that God presents to Himself. Now they begin to think, as long as I am part of the Roman Catholic Church, I can go to heaven. And I dare not leave the Roman Catholic Church because once I'm outside the church, I'm not saved. All right? So this concept is important for the Christian to understand for that first reason. Now there is a second reason why this concept of the universal church and the local church is important. Now, when you look at the book of Ephesians, when God says, now what is the church? Number one, he died for the church and gave himself for it. Now, number two, in order that he might, in verse 26, sanctify and cleanse it the washing of a body, and he will present to himself a, a, a people who are separate, holy, holy, separate. Now, then the second reason that the Christian, in understanding this, must begin to, to change is this. Now, if God says you are part of the universal church, and God says this universal church are people that He expects to sanctify for Himself, means make clean, pure, holy for Himself, and that He intends to be, that will be holy, means separate to Himself. Now, it means then that you, if you believe that you are, if you are sure of your salvation, you are to be a separate people, a holy people. Now, why some Christians say this? Well, other Christians live like that. In my church, my church is not like that. Why is it that some Christians even think this way? Well, you know, this church is too strict. So I go to another church. All right, I go to another church. Because in this church, they don't preach against the sins in my life. And anyway, I don't think these are sins, all right? I want to marry unbelievers. I want to um, drink. I want to gamble. I want to um, dress immodestly. I want to <clears throat> pursue the things of the world. What's wrong with that? But, wow, this kind of church, they preach against these things. Well, so I go and be part of another church. In that church, I'm fine there. All right, I fit in. They are like me, so I'm happy. Now, because of the failure to understand, God says, now, if you are a believer, you are part of the universal church. You can try and run away and go to, well, a church that lowers God's standard to your standard. It doesn't change the thing that if you are a believer, you are part of a people that God intends for you to be holy, that He intends to um, sanctify you for Himself. means He will give you His word. He will sanctify you means He wants to cleanse you. You can hide in a church where you feel, well, the standards are my standards. You can hide there. But God says, if you all believe, I intend to make you holy. Not wherever you run away, you are supposed to be holy. When He gives you His word, He is trying to make you holy. When He points out the errors in your life, in your family life, He is trying to sanctify you because you are part of the holy church. You're part of the holy universal Catholic church. Then you begin to realize, well... God, as long as I'm safe, I'm part of this universal church, I'm supposed to be holy. When I receive the word that I don't like, instead of saying, I'll go to another church where they don't preach these things, you say, I will stay. Because God intends to sanctify me as His people for Himself. And when I meet God, well, I can be in a, a, a low standard church. When I meet God, I meet Him as part of a member of the universal church, and I will give an account for my life. I can't say, well, when I was in this church, God, you know, that church wasn't like that, so it should be fine, right? So do you understand why it is important for the Christian to understand? You, if you are a believer, if you, are, you know you are saved, 
You are part of a people, a, a gathering of people. You may be here, but a gathering in God's eyes of the whole world of people today, this week, worshipping Him that is supposed to be holy, separate unto Himself. You, your family, your children, you as parents, you as singles. All right, so this concept must be understood on the people's part. Then it means then on the church's part, on the part of the church, the church must understand as well. The church is supposed to be a gathering of holy ones of God. Yes, the church will realize there are some unbelievers in the church. But the church cannot say, well, you know, let's give the people what they want. No, the church is supposed to be a gathering of holy people worshipping God. And therefore, the church must ensure, ensure that if this is Christ's purpose, to sanctify to himself a holy people, then the church must be holy. The church cannot lower God's standard. The church cannot be people men pleasers because god says well church this is what i want as many as many of these people who are sanctified as possible in a church as many as possible so that is the duty of the church all right so if you look at your bbk books all right this is what i've just explained in page um, the first the first page who forms the invisible church of jesus christ well, the invisible church of Jesus Christ is made up of all those who have, who have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb out of every kindred, tongue, and people, and nation. Right? So when you say the church worships God today, what do you mean? Is it the local church you're talking about? Or is it the universal church? You are, if you're a believer, part of universal church. Then you must live as a people of God, a child of God, right? That is holy. Now, then the next one. Um... Now, if you, if you look, what are the mark of the invisible church? They are all, members are all in Christ, born-again believers, all right? They are found in the local churches. So, elderly, teens, young people, adults, don't think that's because you're a member of BPCWA, you are going to heaven. Are you part of this universal church? That is the question. Now, if you turn to the next page, all right? So, now, are you, part of, are you part of the universal church? Is the, is the church, the local church, ensuring that they are like, as close as possible to the image of the universal church? They love to pray. They love to study God's word. They love to do God's kingdom's work. Evangelize, for example. All right? Sacraments are obeyed and practiced. Like today, we are going to have the holy sacrament. And so on and so forth. All right? Now, then you look at page 165, all right? The nature of the invisible church. The nature of the invisible church. So these are some of the things. So it is a bride, a chaste virgin, a kept pure, spotless, blameless. Okay, so it also quotes Ephesians chapter 5. So that is a concept. Let it be settled in your heart. Then therefore, let you be a genuine member of an invisible church, number one. Number two, do not, do not get upset at the church, when the church tries to sanctify you, all right? Respond to it. That is how God wants the church to be. Now, then we come to this other important understanding. Now, does it mean that all local churches then therefore are fine? Because in there, there are believers and unbelievers. Now, God warns us that there will be false teachers, false prophets, false doctrines. It will be rife. In fact, God says, the time shall come, and we are already deep in it. False churches. False churches. Is attending any church. Well, it's a local church. I am a believer. I'm a genuine believer. So, as long as I find a church, there are some believers there, I can settle in there. Is it true? Is it true? Now, the fact that God says that you are let me use this. You are a true believer. Should you be found in unsound churches, charismatic churches, new evangelical churches, ecumenical churches, well, the Roman Catholic Church, liberal churches, modernist, modernist, modernism churches, all right, all this, should you be found there where the deity of Christ is denied or they may call Christ God but well, they practice things that are contrary to the Word of God, like the charismatic movement. Should you be part of them? Because 
listen carefully. We do not teach that there are no believers in the charismatic church. Please understand that. They say, oh, that settles it. Fine. Actually, I prefer charismatic churches. I'm going there. Is it right to say that? Now, we do not teach that only true believers are found in, in BPCWA or the Bible Presbyterian movement. Please be very clear about that. We warn that there are unbelievers, all right, in BPCWA, in BP movement as well. No difference. But should you be part of such churches, since there are believers there, what do you think? Now, turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. What did Paul write to the believers and warn them about? Now, he warned them that there will be certain temples, certain churches, all right, certain gatherings that are unbiblical. What to do? What to do? What should they do? Now, look at um, verse, verses 14, all right, to 18. Um, all right, 14 to 18, reading. Let's read together, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 14 to 18. Be ye not unequally yoked to together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my, pe my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Now here, there were already these problems. There are people who thought they can be part of these this, uh, false movements, these false churches, where they accept everything, accept, uh, allow anything, bring in the idols, bring in, well, in their days, the physical idols. In our time, what? The idols of the world. We are supposed to be separate, promote worldliness, right? Now, for example, so now he says, now he says, don't you know that you are the temple of the living God? I dwell in you. Look up here. God says, now you, you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And he dwells in you. And you want to take the temple of the Holy God and go to and be part of this kind of movements, this kind of false churches? How can you do that? How dare you do that? Now look at how God puts it. Verse 7, because you are part of the, you are the temple of, the, of God. Wherefore, come out from among them. And number one, come out. Come out. From where? Among them. You're not to be found among them. So don't say, well, there are believers there, right? We don't disagree. But God's instruction to the believers is come out. Come out. From among them. Number two, be separate. Not just come out and have, well, well, I come out. I, I, I better go to a sound church, right? Better go to a sound church. But, well, it's okay. I will go on mission trips with them. Well, I, I don't worship with them. No, be separate. I will support their work. Give financially to them. Now, any church that attacks the word of God, even if you used to be from there, God says, come out. Well, you come out. But God says be separate it means you, do, you have nothing to do with them spiritually anymore. You don't support their work, their ministry. Because when you give of your support to their ministries, whether it's energy, whether it's money, you are not separate. In fact, you are supporting their false cause. They will have the money to set up more mission work around the world. And when they set up those, they will teach in those places. God's word has errors. It's not perfect. Don't be so silly to believe that it's perfect. They will teach. 
Well, it's okay to work with the Roman Catholics, with the new evangelicals. God says, not only come out, after you have come out, be ye separate. No spiritual engagements. Now, it doesn't mean separate means you you quickly erase their telephone number from your handphone. You know, when you walk on the street, you see them, oh, I, I cannot look at them. They say hi, and then you act like in invisible. That is not what it means. Spiritual separation means you engage them. You talk to them for the purpose to help them understand that they are wrong. They, to help them come out also. So you know of another believer. Now, I'm not saying go around sheep stealing, right? Now, if they are looking for a sound church, you help them understand. So, the engagement is for that purpose, so that they will also come out, they will understand, and they will also separate. Now, biblical separation is one of the called-out items in our Constitution. One whole section is given to it. And anyone who wants to become a member must subscribe to it if you do not subscribe to biblical separation means you say lord i reject what you say in scriptures i won't come out i won't separate means even if i become a member i intend to continue to well go go and oh sorry become a member i intend to go and worship in their churches once in a while you take a vow i will be separate because i believe that this this truth is crucial don't be foolish to think that well I think I know better, right? Why is it a key called out tenet in our constitution? Because it's in the Bible. This one thing, this one thing is what killed Israel. Now, these verses that we read, they are quoted from the Old Testament. The problem was with Israel is over time, they began to feel, let us be like the world. Let us adopt their ways. Let us work with other nations whose God is not Jehovah or whose God may be one of them may be Jehovah. Let us now be with them. That was the problem. And God says, come out, come out and then separate yourself. The only way for them to know the truth is you maintain separation, right? But Israel would not. Israel constantly would not. They would want to mingle. God taught them, when you wear clothes, I taught you, don't wear mixed materials. It is not that the material, mixed material are evil, but he used that to teach them, every time you put on your clothes, hmm, I must remember, separation. Animals clean and unclean. Not that the animals in themselves are really unclean, but again to teach them, there are things that are clean, there are things that God says are unclean. If God says unclean, you do not call clean, all right? So when God says these are errors, you don't say, well, it's okay, they're nice people. And then you have spiritual fellowship and extend your hand of fellowship with them in spiritual matters, all right? So be clear, be clear. So the same for the church. The same for the church. Now, you know, some of you do not know the name, but Billy Graham passed away recently. You must know this name, actually. He's still quoted today. One of... The, what the world considers one of the greatest living evangelists, all right? Some even say next to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, he started out well. He started believing in biblical separation, personal as well as ecclesiastical, means church. But he gained popularity, fame, and he soon wanted more. And he began to say, you know, they, he went around nation to nation conducting a um, crusade. They call it the Billy Graham Crusade. And he made this very clear statement. If you, he said, who wants to make a decision? So believe in Christ that this year. And put up your hand. Millions of people put up their hands. And then what the crusade people are taught is, well, if you are a Roman Catholic, and all these are documented, if you are a Roman Catholic, part of this red church, for example, you do not need to leave it. Just stay in there. It is fine. You have made a decision to believe already. Now, please know that the world today, the Christendom today believes in that. Why, is, why are churches like you all splitting, splitting Christianity? We must unite. First Corinthians chapter 6, ripped out of the Bible for them. We must unite. 
They go on mission trip together. All right? What do they say? You are not allowed to talk about anything controversial. You're not allowed to speak against the Roman Catholic beliefs. We are here to just simply do mission work. Build homes, give them clothes, and tell them there is a God, believe in Jesus Christ, and go off. Because they, they know that if we bring up anything that is controversial, there's separation. Now, God is always about separation. Look at how he explains. Light and darkness, righteousness and unrighteousness, Belial and God. God is a God of separation. Please know that. Separation is always for the believer's safety. Hence, the church is called the separated ones, the called out ones. So please don't look at this doctrine and say it is, it is very wicked, it is very um, divisive and all that. It's from God. Do not be foolish and say, BBCWA, we are, we are always on our own. Why don't work with this church down the road? There? Well, we love to work with churches. And we do work with churches. We do support their missionaries and their mission work. We do that. But it was always, right? We must always be very clear there is a line of separation. We'll learn about that later on, all right? So this is one thing that you must accept if you want to become a member of BPCWA. When God called his people, if you want to be an Israelite, means a worshiper of the living God, there is one thing that must be clear in your flesh. You are a circumcised people, right? It's always a reminder that they are different from the world and they are to be separate, cut off from the world, all right? So, now, so church universal and church local, it is very important for us to understand that. Now, what else must we learn about the church? The church today is often seen as an appendix. You know appendix? Appendix in the body, by and large, um, doctors medically say that, well, it is not a necessary organ in you. You can do without it. Okay, it, ex it explodes, just cut it off or, or get rid of it. it. It doesn't affect you too much. So an appendix means an, a not an absolutely necessary part. Well, it exists, it's there, that is it. Today, people view church as that, which is why many church advertise, well, you know, we are a very relaxed church. You don't have to come. You don't have to come. You can worship at home, you know, in, in your pajamas um, and put, kick, off your, kick up your leg, like put your leg and just enjoy the worship. Now, there are people who have become like that. They listen so much. I never forget one of our very long time um, member who has, who has left us. Because this person, instead of separating, keeps attending their Bible studies, keep attending, uh, keep listening, being part of their work and all that, now, eventually, the person felt that, well, church is not really necessary. So I want to say this. Just because you grew up in a sound church, you keep hearing the sound doctrines. Just because of that. Now, if you don't separate and you want to embrace darkness, sometimes God will let it, let it overwhelm you. So keep going, going, going. You say, don't, you know. You will be confused. And you hardly study God's Word in this church. You want to go there? You don't even have this fortification. Now, I came a time, the person texted me, you know, Pastor, this morning message was very good. I said, good, why were you not here? And the person said this, what for, you know? I can worship God from home. This morning was really nice. The weather was so nice. I had a cup of tea and I sat in the garden and, you know, I just relaxed. And after that, I continued with my own things. Now, it has, dawned, it has grown into the person that church is not necessary. I have time, I go. Is that church? Now, if you look at Ephesians chapter 5 again. Now, what does Christ say about the church? Verse 25. Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Please know this. What is the church? I'm not just talking about the local church, all right? The gathering of believers. I put it that way. What is the gathering of believers physically? What is it? What is the church for? Christ said, I died for the church. God gave himself. Means God said, I give my all to this thing called the church. So do you think the church, that God meant for church to be an appendix in the believer's life? Prayer meeting, I feel like I go Bible study. If it's there, well, it determines whether I'm free or not. Well, Sunday worship, well, that's the Ten Commandments, so I go. Today, people don't even go. 
Church, is it an appendix to you? Not absolutely necessary. Think of this. When Christ said, I died for you, Christ is not saying you individually is so important that I died for you. Christ said, I died for the church because you make up the church. Christ died for the church. There are very few things that we would die for. When you die for something, means it's extremely important to you. So, Christian, I hope you banish that thought. Now, again, this failure to understand this universal church that Christ died for, we feel that, well, my family is more important. My school, my job, my activities, my personal activities are more important than what God died for. Right? So when you think of church, you must think, what is church? Jesus Christ shed his blood, cleansed, washed, and redeemed for himself. That is the church. I must love the church. If Christ loved the church so much and died for it, I will love the church. I will be willing to put aside, means die to self for the church, not insist on my way so that I get my ways. I get what I want. But Christ died for the church. To make it holy, I love it. I will support it. I will fight for it. I will defend its truth. That is what it is. All right, so the failure to understand has led to also this other problem. Church is not important. Now turn with me to Hebrews 10, 25. Hebrews 10. Now hence, God says this to the believers. Hebrews 10, 25. Now, Maybe we read from 23 to 25, reading. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke one unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as ye see the day approaching, now, there was this problem. Look at verse 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves, which is the church, as the manner of some is. Already when the New Testament church started, some didn't feel that it was so important. And God says, neglecting the assembly, as, uh, sorry, as the manner of some is. Is it not true today? Where are you when the church assembles? at prayer meeting, at Bible studies, at fellowships, at activities. Don't be a Christian and say, well, as long as I don't break the Ten Commandments, don't break the Fourth Commandment, I'm fine. All right, I'm fine. Now, if you are a Christian that say, all right, if it's in Ten Commandments, I will go. But the others are optional. Now, I do not disagree. If you cannot make it for some things on the weekdays, that is not a sin. But on Sunday... Now, unless it is absolute, ne absolutely necessary, necessary, and you choose, you choose, huh? I choose to go for a performance. I choose to go for my run. I choose to, you choose to break the, the fourth commandment. Yes, that is sin. Yes, weekdays it is not. But the Christian now began to think this. Since other activities is not in the Ten Commandments, right? It's mainly the worship. Then I don't go. That is the thinking. But what does God's Word say? Yes, it's not apodictic but what does god's word say the manner of some is please know this when the church encourages you to come it has nothing to do with our interest in numbers whether it's one person turning up whether it's 100 person turning up i will preach the same message the session will still work as hard but god tells you he died for this church means to say this he died to give you this church my friends he died to give you an environment for you why why well obviously definitely the lord's day worship where we can worship him serve him and receive his word of course but the bible says very clearly the assembling of the saints is why god gave you a church now look at verse 25 exhorting one another so much more. It is the gathering of God's people where you get to get exhortation, where in verse 24, you provoke one another unto love and good works. So the gathering 
helps you spiritually. Now, listen to this, parents. If you, if you give all your all and give something to your child because you know that is so important to the child, and the child says, nah, well, if I feel like it, I'll do it. If some parts important, I'll do it. Others, I don't care. But you see, but mommy and daddy literally almost died to give you this good thing. That is what God is saying. That is what God is saying. Now, last one. Turn to Acts chapter 2. It is for your good. Now, God died to give you something. Why do you look at it as so negative? Acts chapter 2. This is the very first church. And then we close. This is the very first church. Acts chapter 2. Now, shall we read um, verse 41 to um, 46, 47 together? 41. Then they that gladly received his word and were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many works and one. Wonders and signs were done by the apostles, and all that believed were together and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continue, and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily as should, such should be saved. Now, what is he saying? That was the life of the first church, the New Testament church, so to speak. The first New Testament church. That is how they live. You read it and you say they constantly gathered, not just on the Lord's day, but house to house, daily, together. Why? Because they understood Christ died to give us this very good environment. It is not a terrible thing for me to go to. Because it will provoke unto love. It will stir me. I will help others. And I will constantly receive the word and I will grow. God died to give you that. So Christian, I hope that you understand a little bit more about church next week. When we come back, we learn more. God willing, we learn. Why are there different denominations? How should we view them? Let us pray. What do we have here? Top five reasons why church dropouts, uh, what church dropouts say, why they stop attending church. Now, please remember 66% of, well, I take the American view, um, they are the most readily available results. They stop attending church at least a year after turning 18. So from